Hello and welcome to another video. I'm in temporary living space, so this is not the usual background. Um, but in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about why I banned Assert Raises, a context manager that's used in unit test test cases to check that an exception was raised. Now the functionality seems fine, but I want I wanted to walk you through why I banned it and what I replaced it with. So anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so to frame this, uh, we actually. <laughs> We actually have to go and look at some work stuff. So I work at Sentry. Uh, Sentry does error analysis and performance uh, monitoring for uh, code. It's a developer tool. And one of the things that we do at Sentry is we use Sentry to help ourselves develop. One of the things that we feed into Sentry is actually our test failures so that we can easily triage them, figure out why like a, a test was flaky, look at the data, look at you know, how often it flaked and things like that. And so today we're looking at a test that failed and uh, failed at a pretty low rate. It's something like one in a hundred-ish. Uh, and we were trying to figure out why. You can see that we have 140 events here. Uh, this is resolved because this was, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, and there's like the stack trace and, you know, basically the exception message. You can, you can poke through this. It's how Sentry works. So usually this is errors for production, but, you know, you can also use it for test errors, which is kind of nice. Uh, and you'll notice here that the test failure is a uh, an attribute error, and it's actually inside of a call inside this test here, which calls assert raises. And so it's looking for a client error. And this test should have failed. Like this test failure is correct, and, and everything about that is fine. The problem with this test failure is it's really hard to debug when you use assert raises. Uh, Sentry helpfully includes the local variables when things uh, have stack traces, and usually they're redacted if there's uh, credentials or other interesting things in there. Uh, but usually you can poke at the the uh, you know, local variables and try and figure out exactly why things fail. So you can see in this frame here, we have local variables. Uh, when you step into any of these other frames, you'll see that they're just gone. There's no, there's no locals to be found anywhere in here, which makes it really difficult to debug. And this isn't just a, a sentry bug, this is the cause of assert raises. If we actually open up a uh, interpreter here and make a little test case that demonstrates this, get into our usual explains folder here uh, from unit test import test case, class test thing, test case. I'll just write a quick little test. Um, I don't know, x, y. Uh, if x does not equal y, raise, I don't know, value error. <laughs> I don't know, very, very silly function, something like this. And maybe we wanted to uh, test this function by doing with self.assert raises. It's so weird to write this because I'm used to writing tests, uh, uh, PyTest stuff here. Now let's say that we had used, I don't know, the wrong uh, exception type here and we had called this function with f12. So if we do Python 3 unit test discover t.py, uh, t, yeah, there we go. Uh, and I named the thing wrong. Is that what I need? <laughs> thing test, I can never remember the uh, proper naming for these. What the heck? Uh, why is it not discovering these properly? Well, if I can't get this to work, I will just use PyTest instead to run unit test test cases. Because I don't remember how unit test works. <laughs> Does anyone actually? I don't know. All right. So if we run this with PyTest, you'll see that we get value error. And that's fine. This should have failed with a value error. Now, the annoying thing about this is if we go to try and debug this, and I've done a video on this before. I will link it in the description. I think it's called postmortem debugging, something like that. Uh, if we go to postmortem debug this, PyTest t.py and use PDB, uh, you'll see that it'll drop us exactly where the error was raised, so we can poke around and figure out what went wrong, usually. <laughs> but if we go and try and poke around here, you'll see that x and y are just gone. There's no local variables to be found. Uh, if we go up, however, uh, well, we didn't have any local variables in the up here. Let's say we did this, x, y. If we go up a frame, we can actually poke around at x and y because they haven't been cleared from this frame. But what assert raises actually did is it took the stack trace that got raised, which is how postmortem debugging works, and it stripped all the variables from it, <laughs> which makes it really difficult to debug your tests when they fail. Now, if we instead used pytest.raises, 
instead of uh, the unit test version, import pipe test and replace this with pytest.raises. Uh, it'll still fail in the same way as before. And if we try and debug this now, we can look at the local variables. They still are around. PyTest doesn't clear them. So that's essentially the reason why I've decided to ban this function. Uh, and actually at work, I wrote a small little linter for this. Entry. Uh, where does it live? I believe it's in tools, flake eight plugin. I, of course, haven't separated this out into its own plugin. Um, but I effectively banned them using a local flake eight plugin. And I believe this is actually the patch where I converted them all. <laughs> so uh, a nice big patch to switch from assert raises to pytest raises. Basically a small little thing, just so that debugging is a little bit easier. And uh, that's why I don't use assert raises. Now I actually looked into the history of why it does this. And it looks like the bug in CPython that triggered the change in assert raises was actually caused by a different thing. So they unintentionally fixed a bug in the wrong-ish way, which caused this behavior. But um, seems like they don't want to change the behavior anyway. But that's why I don't use assert raises. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.